In chapter 19, we talk about the entrepreneur's options. Here are some factors to consider uh, by an entrepreneur. When uh, choosing a business entity, you want to look at the ease of creating it, the uh, owner's liability, taxes, as well as the need for uh, capital to start up the business. In a sole proprietorship, the owner is the business, and anyone uh, who doesn't organize in a different way is a sole proprietorship. Uh, some advantages included control, profit, uh, flexibility, and ease of creation and maintenance. Disadvantages include the uh, owner's liability for all torts and contracts, uh, a lack of continuity or continuation after death, and a difficulty in raising financing. Uh, in business law one we talk about agency and uh, there's kind of related concepts in business law two and partnerships. Partnerships are governed both by the common law as well as statutory law. Each partner is deemed to be an agent and a fiduciary of the other. There may be imputation of liability. In other words, uh, one party may end up having liability for other partners. Uh, it's created when two or more persons, including a corporation, agree to carry on their business for profit as co-owners with equal rights to manage and share profits uh, under the UPA or Uniform Partnership Act. Uh, in the absence of a partnership agreement, the U UPA as adopted by most states, governs a partnership. Uh, there's a presumption of a partnership if uh, there's a sharing of profits or losses, joint ownership, and an equal right to be involved in the management of the business. Rights and duties of partners. In the absence of an agreement, oral or written, state statutes govern the partnership rights. In terms of management, uh, there's an equal right. Each one has a vote. The majority wins. Uh, you need unanimous consent for some uh, actions. Interest in the partnership, there's equal profit and losses are shared as profits are shared. There's no um, guaranteed or set compensation. Uh, in terms of inspection of the books, um, that is a right. And also there's a right by the representative of a deceased partner. In terms of accounting, when uh, other partners uh, commit fraud, embezzlement, wrongful exclusion, or any time is just and reasonable, there can be an accounting. Another right is property rights. Property acquired by the partnership remains partnership property. An individual partner has no right to sell, mortgage, or transfer partnership property. However, a creditor or individual partner can petition a court for a charging order to attach to individual's partner's uh, property interest. Uh, there's a right to use or possess property on behalf of the partnership, uh, a right to assign a right to the share of the profits to someone else to satisfy uh, their individual debt, uh, a right to use or possess property on behalf of the partnership, or to assign rights uh, of the share of profits to another. In terms of partnership operation, there's a fiduciary duty owed by partners. Uh, another way of saying that is partners are fiduciaries and general agents of one another and the partnership itself. There are some advantages and disadvantages of the partnership. They're easy and inexpensive to set up. They have some tax advantages in terms of pass-through income. Uh, they allow you to get um, potentially more capital contribution, uh, third-party loans, but there's, there is some liability. If a partner is sued for partnership debt, the partner has a right to insist that other partners be sued with her, uh, and, and there's joint liability. A third party must sue all partners as a group, but each partner can't be liable for the full amount. There are also limited liability partnerships. 
Uh, it's designed primarily for professional service firms. It allows uh, uh, limits on personal liability the partners, but allows for the uh, pass-through advantages in terms of taxes. It's relatively easy to form or convert to an LLP. Uh, partnership law makes all partners jointly and severally liable. In other words, uh, a partner may be liable for part or all of the debt uh, or liability in terms of uh, partner's torts. An LLP allows professionals to avoid personal liability for malpractice of other partners. Um, one issue that comes up is what liability does LLP have in relation to uh, another state. Most states would apply the law of the state of where the LLP was formed. Partnership law makes all partners jointly and severally liable for one another's torts, including uh, personal assets. That's um, a sharing of liability. There are li limited partnerships, which consist of general partners and limited partners. Uh, they're created by state statute that limits the liability of the owners or limited partners. There's at least one general partner and one limited partner to carry on a business for profit. Only general partners can manage, but they also have fiduciary obligation to, L to the limited partnership. Uh, limited partners enjoy limited liability. It's kind of why they're set up that way, as long as they don't engage in, in management functions. And then if they did, the law may treat them as a general partner. General partners assume all management and personal liability. Uh, limited partners don't manage and therefore aren't liable beyond the amount of their investment. They could become liable if they are caught managing the limited partnership. Corporations, we'll talk, that is a form of business organization for an entrepreneur. We'll talk more about that in, in a later chatter, chapter. Uh, they're, they're pretty wise they use their uh, create created by statute um, they're owned by shareholders board of directors manage them officers oversee them and they're set up um, primarily to, to limit the uh, investor or shareholders liability there's also LLC's or limited liability companies they're a hybrid they combine uh, a limited liability of a corporation and tax advantages of partnership. They're, they're governed by state statute and they're formed by filing articles of organization with some central state authority and they need to include the name of the business, their principal address, name and address of registered agents, and name of the owners. A member or owner is um, their liability is limited to the amount of their uh, investment. They can be shielded from personal liability even when uh, sued by members of the same firm. Since the LLC is a, a separate legal entity from its owners uh, created by state statute, um, there are some ju jurisdictional issues that come up for Federal diversity jurisdiction, the LLC, may be treated differently than a corporation. Uh, the citizenship of an LLC is the citizenship of its members, which may actually live in multiple jurisdictions. There are advantages and disadvantages of LLC. Obviously, an advantage in the title is limited liability, uh, flexibility in terms of taxes, that income could be passed through. Uh, management is easier, it might be easier to get foreign investors. Main disadvantage is that the law is different in, in different states. Generally, most states apply law the state in which the LLC was formed, which could present uh, conflicts of, of laws if, if the law is different in the state it was formed from the state it's operating in or, or being sued in. LLCs are operated through an operating agreement. 
that could be oral, uh, should be written, contain provisions like how they're managed, um, dividends, meetings, transfer, membership, interest, other issues. Uh, partnership law might apply if the operating agreement is silent. Uh, in terms of management, they're either member managed or manager managed. Uh, both managers and members owe a fiduciary duty to the LLC and each other. And the decision-making procedures that they follow are generally outlined in the operating agreement. Disassociation from LLC. A member has the power but not right to disassociate from the LLC at any time. Uh, this might be uh, voluntary. It might be uh, ex by other members or a court order, bankruptcy, incompetence, or death. Uh, the disassociating member loses the right to participate in management and the right to act as an agent. A member also has the right to have her interest bought out by other members. If the dissolution or disassociation violates the operating it is wrongful and the member can be held liable for damages. Uh, a disassociated member has no right to force dissolution uh, remaining members can choose to continue or dissolve the LLC. Another type of um, special business organization is called a joint venture. Two more entities combine their efforts uh, or property for a single transaction or project. Uh, unless otherwise agreed, its uh, profits and losses are shared equally. It's common in international transactions when uh, there's a U.S. company that wants to expand overseas without uh, waiting to set up plants and, and facilities. Similar to a partnership in terms of uh, taxation and equal rights management, uh, but it's limited in, in terms of its time and scope. Uh, partnerships are, are usually ongoing. Joint venture members have less implied and apparent authority because they're, they're doing it for a specific purpose, for a specific time in some cases, uh, and a, a death of a, a joint venture member doesn't terminate the jo joint venture. It continues for the duration of the purpose of the joint venture. Other special business forms include syndicates, joint stock companies, business trusts, cooperatives. I should know the difference between that. Uh, syndicate is a group of individuals getting together to finance a particular project. Uh, a joint st stock company is a, a hybrid of a partnership and corporation. The ownership is represented by shares of stock. It's managed by directors and officers of a company and can be perpetual. Business trust is created by a written agreement setting forth the interest of the beneficiaries and obligations and powers of the trustees. A legal ownership and management of the property remains with the trustees and profits are distributed to the beneficiaries of the trust. Cooperative is an associated organ organized to provide a not-for-profit service to its members. Franchises are a specific type of uh, special business organization. Uh, they're an arrangement in which the franchisor or owner of the trademark intellectual property um, licenses to the franchisee to use their intellectual property um, Different types of franchises include distributorship, chain style, or manufacturing or processing arrangements. Um, franchises are governed by both federal and state law. Uh, in terms of federal law, um, there's industry-specific standards that protect the franchisee from unreasonable demands and bad faith termination. The FTC franchise rule governs disclosures, both written and online. Uh, state statutes that govern franchises that protect from unfair trade practices and bad faith termination. Uh, you know, somebody pays to license a franchise and then the uh, franchise is taken. Uh, requirement for disclosure documentation, including cost, uh, expenses, profits earned, substantiating those figures, not just selling franchises by providing additional uh, made-up information, and the uh, state law may prohibit termination without good cause. 
The franchise contract usually includes payment for the franchise, um, capital structure, sales quotas, record keeping. Uh, the business is um, could be light, licensed, leased, purchased. Uh, often governs the location of the franchise, and there's usually some provision for quality control. Um, the franchise has value by its goodwill, reputation. Uh, it's value of intellectual property. Um, usually some uh, contractual provisions around things like uh, pricing, uh, supervision. Some issues arise in a termination of franchises. Um, the franchise agreement may grant the franchisee the opportunity to cure uh, an ordinary breach within the period of time to prevent termination. In other words, if the franchise agreement runs for a specific number of years and there's a, an issue with the contract, then the franchisee could fix that before the time runs out. There's an assumption of good faith and fair dealing. Uh, if the franchisor's decision to terminate the, the agreement was made in the normal course of the franchisor's business operations and it was reasonable notice of termination given to the franchisee, um, most courts will not consider that a, a wrongful termination.